Hi my friends, in today's video we are going to examine the lambda function. Let's start with defining it first. A lambda function is just like an, any normal function, except that it has no name when defining it and that it is contained in one line of code. I know that definitions don't make much sense at first, so let's get started examples without wasting any time. First of all, let's write a normal function so that we can better understand the difference between normal function and lambda. We have already learned how to define functions in the previous lessons, so I am writing a function that will calculate square of a number. So let's name it square func and then it will get a parameter let's say a this function take a parameter and then it return the square of it to us so I will just need to add return keyword here I call this function in the print function so that we can see the result let's write it and then as a parameter let's pass 2 then I run it ok we got the result which is correct now let's create the same function with the lambda function first I start by typing the lambda keyword lambda keyword here means I will define an anonymous function and then I specify the parameters that this lambda function will take. Since we are doing the same function as above, we will pass the same parameters. Here we specify the parameters we write here. So we, we just need to write A. If we had taken more than one parameter here, like ABC, and then I need I will need to write A, B, C. I delete them. I just, I just wanted to show you. And then I need to put a column. In our scenario, it will return the square of the number A. So I just need to write the same thing. So I copy it and then that's it. You may think that we forgot to use return keyword here. So you may think that we need to write re return as we did here. But we don't use the return keyword in lambda function. It already returns the value here. There is no need to, to, to write return keyword. Now we need to call this function. There are a few ways to call the function, but first I assign the lambda function to a variable. So let's say, I don't know, get square. I will print it. I will write the, the, func the, the variable name I wrote here. So I will copy it. And then inside the parentheses, I will pass two just I did here I run it we got the same result by writing it shorter by lambda function now let's take a quick look at the lambda function that takes multiple parameters you already guess how to do it so I will show you quickly without dwelling too much on it I'm creating under lambda function say lambda a and b and then the function will add these two parameters so it's already returned it so I don't need to write anything like return I will assign it to variables let's say numbers and uh, I will call it I will just send 8 as a second parameter I run it we got 10 I want to ask you a question what if we have numbers that we don't know the count of and uh, we want to get the sum of them how can we do this? 
Look, I, I, what I want to show you is that when we define any function just with it here or here, we specify the count of parameters here. We wrote two parameters here, we write just a single parameter here, here just a single parameter. What can we do if we don't know this parameter amount, this parameter count I mean? The count of parameters can be changed, it can be 1 or it can be 100 or 1000. We, we may not predict that. Of course, we can't write parameters since it is not exact. So, I mean, if we, want, if we don't know the, the amount of parameters, we can't write, mm, maybe there can be, I don't know, 10 parameters. So, let's write A, B, C, D and something like that. We can't do that because we don't know the exact amount. As a solution, we can use a special syntax, which is args. args stands for arguments and uh, we use arguments that we don't know the amount of to get into our function. So let's see that with the lambda example. I want to show you, I will clean my editor, I create under lambda function and then I put an asterisk and then I just need to write args. This means that the lambda function accepts all the arguments regardless of count or amount of parameters. There is the last step, you know, we put a colon. Now I want to print the args here before doing anything so we can better see what args is. So I will just print it and uh, I will assign it to a variable. So let's say all numbers. Let's call this function all sorry all numbers and uh, I will write I don't know a few numbers as a parameter. I will remove the old function here. Let's run it. Look at the terminal. The none comes from the, this print. Actually, we don't need to print it because we already printed it inside the lambda function. So that's why it returned none. I will print it again. Okay. We got the result. We learned some methods from previous videos. We saw how to use built-in functions like sum, max, min, len in the first videos. So we can use any of those functions that suits our needs here. For example, let's get the sum of these given numbers. So all I need to do is I just need to write sum. The sum function will give me the total of these numbers, the sum of these numbers. So if I run it, it didn't give me anything because I forgot to print it. So let's run it again. Okay, the result is 25. I can also get the greatest numbers among these numbers. So I just need to use max. I will run it. The greatest the greatest number is 6 here. You can check it. We can perform our operations or processes smoothly and simply. So let's continue. We use the lambda function by assigning it to a variable, but we can use it without assigning to any variable. We can directly write this lambda function anonymously and uh, get the result we want. I clean my editor. So let's write lambda. And then let's say this parameter, this function takes two parameters A and B as always. I will return total of A and B. Okay. Our function is ready now. Now I need to wrap this function in a bracket. So I just put a bracket here.
parameter so let's say 5 and 5 if I run it I didn't get any result because the last step I need to print it and that's all okay I got the result now you may be wondering we have already learned how to define a function why should we prefer a lambda function to a normal function for the first of these we can say that it is much shorter to express functions with lambda while developing a project we need to write as few lines and clean code as we can in order to obtain both more readable and cleaner results one of the other options is that if there is a function used in only one place in our project we can write that function with lambda so that it doesn't take up space since it is not used in, in a different place I think you will understand better with an example let's create a list first I will delete it I don't know let's write example list that I will add something in it in tuples so let's say Andy, Andy I will put the H I have a list like this and then I want to sort this list by H here if you remember we had some array methods I recommend you to watch that video even if you haven't so can for example can we do the sorting using array methods so let's try it I will just write example list that sort and then I will print the example list just run it look as you can see the sort method sorted our list but in alphabetical order what we want is to sort by age here we can do this I mean we can we can sort by age with the help of functions and then I want to show you how to do it look at the screen see if something interests you there's a parameter here name key that we haven't used before this key is a parameter that we use to determine how we will do the sorting and uh, this parameter accepts a function it doesn't have to be a lambda function you can pass a normal function but creating a separate function for such operations is not preferred because it will cause code clutter now let's continue all I need to do write a function so I will write key here and then I need a function I will use lambda function as a parameter you can give any name I will just write a as we did the a here will represent the comma separated values here I mean it will represent this tuple and then this tuple and then this tuple and it will continue so on because these values are comma separated values so I put a colon here what we said is we want to sort this list by age we need this age value here which is in the first index so we will just write a and uh, I just need to write one here so if I run it look at the terminal sorting by age has been done yeah that's great actually as I said we can do this with a normal function but using an anonymous function is cleaner here I want to show you the other usage right away quickly I need to define a function so let's say def and uh, we need a name I don't know let's say sort by age when you use a lambda function you don't even have to worry about finding a name for your function so use lambda function I will write a here or x let's change the parameter x and uh, all I need to do is 
just return x first index which will represent the h here and the uh, is a key i will delete the lambda function here i need to send this function name we don't put parentheses here like that it's a wrong way and uh, i think it's it's not going to work so just write the name of function if i run it look we got the same result thanks for watching i hope it was clear see you in the next video